you described it, Anne Marie, America has plunged into chaos as protests against police brutality and the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. You can't forget that we are still in the midst of this pandemic, Anne Marie. It continues to grip the country. The recent deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, they're all fueling massive demonstrations nationwide. Protesters and activists are demanding justice for black Americans that have been recently killed by police and facing systemic racism for decades. Over the weekend, some cities saw peaceful protests where officers actually joined in the demonstrations, uh, other, or at least joined the demonstrators, I should say, and other rallies, though, turned violent as cops and National Guard members escalated tensions with tear gas, pepper spray, and rubber bullets. Some people responded by looting, starting fires, and burning cop cars. George Floyd's son weighed in on the situation. Tearing up things, it's not going to solve anything. My dad is in peace, and we have to be the ones that, uh, that deal with all this stress. And it's going to be kind of tough to get over this day by day. Um, well, Derek Chauvin, that's the officer who was arrested, who arrested Floyd. That's the officer that you see in that video with his knee on his neck. He has been charged with third degree murder. Protesters and activists basically say, listen, that is not enough. They're also demanding that the other three officers involved in that arrest, you would have seen other officers on that videotape who were not checking in on Floyd, who were not reacting and were not intervening. Well, many people want them to face charges as well. Floyd's family attorney, Benjamin Crump, spoke to Face the Nation about the case. His family had been notified by the owner of a club that Derek uh, Chauvin was an off-duty police officer while George Floyd was a security guard. And so they had to overlap. And so that is going to be an interesting aspect to this case and hopefully upgrading these charges to first-degree murder because we believe he knew who George Floyd was. All right, so Jeff Begay's uh, has the very latest for us. Jeff, you're in Minneapolis. Uh, man, you must be exhausted. Um, I was just exhausted sort of watching what was unfolding, and then uh, it was like this sort of horrible ping pong ball that jumped from one city to a next to a next. And you could see kind of very similar activities, um, but Minneapolis is sort of ground zero. Tell us what happened over the weekend um, I, I, between sort of the looting and the protests and, and the peaceful protests. Um, the tractor trailer that I thought I saw, you know, drive, drive through a crowd there. It was just an unbelievable weekend. Tell us what it was like. Yeah, well, if, if uh, Minneapolis is ground zero, this is definitely the epicenter of all this. Obviously, this is where it started, the bus stop right here. Uh, this is where police took George Floyd into custody. Uh, this is where he said uh, with uh, Officer Chauvin's me on his neck that I can't breathe. So it is here. Of course, this area has been transformed a great deal in the last week. You have this huge memorial that is now uh, spreaded, spreading across the walls of this cup foods here. Uh, you have people coming to this area to pray, to see, to leave flowers for George Floyd. And so this is where it started. And, and as you noted, Amory, how much this world has changed in the last week. You have these demonstrations that started here on this block. They've spread across the country. But here in Minneapolis, things are calming down. As you know, toward the end of last week, you had looting, you had fires, you had arson. You had some uh, really tough things to see. Uh, but with the uh, National Guard coming in here, with the help of the state police as well as local police, they have been able to calm things down. And a big part of this story has been that, you know, most of these protests are peaceful. But the story that has emerged is that some of these peaceful rallies are being infiltrated by people who are trying to incite trouble, trying to incite violence. And then yesterday, you know, I was honestly taking a break and, and watching the coverage of our local affiliate here, WCCO in Minneapolis, and you see this tanker truck uh, heading for this peaceful crowd of protesters. And that, quite frankly, was terrifying to watch. 
Uh, and so there is a lot that has unfolded here. But the hope is that this city has turned the corner in terms of some of these uh, violent incidents. They have destroyed city blocks of Minneapolis. They have you know, ruined the lives of people who have worked for years to achieve what they've been able to achieve, whether that's the restaurant that they were hoping to open, whether that was the store that they were uh, hoping to uh, have to, you know, fuel their retirement, if you will. Um, and then, of course, all of this, uh, beginning with George Floyd's case. And you, you know, you think about what his family is enduring right now, and they have made pleas for people to, you know, if you demonstrate, do it in a peaceful way. Uh, so it has been a dizzying week here in Minneapolis, and now a lot of the country is seeing many of the same symptoms, if you will, of what started here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jeff, I know, I know you've been talking to protesters and activists on the ground. Uh, we've heard them say uh, that uh, the arrest of Derek Chauvin is just one of the steps uh, that they want to see uh, leaders there take. What are you hearing as far as demands uh, for the arrest of the other three police officers, where we are in that process, and beyond that, what are they saying uh, to you that they want beyond that, because I know that there are some people who are saying, well, this is why the census matters. This is why voting matters. But the question becomes, do those activists, do those young people want to vote for a politician, no matter the political stripe, when they inherently support what many now see as a, an inequitable criminal justice system? Well, I think in the short term, what many in this community, especially those people who come here to honor George Floyd's memory, they want to see justice. They want to see not one officer arrested, but all four in custody. Uh, and what we know is that the three other officers are still under investigation. They have not been cleared, and there are prominent officials in this city and state who are calling for them to be arrested, too. And I think, you know, the people who come out here uh, to honor George Floyd, they want action to be taken against those other officers. Why? Because they feel like the other officers didn't do enough to save his life. So we'll have to see where that case goes. And of course, uh, Chauvin is expected in court. It was going to happen today, but they've pushed it back to next week. Uh, and so, you know, there is a lot of time between now and next week, so we'll have to see how the investigation progresses. Also today, uh, the Floyd family, through their attorney, Benjamin Crump, they're going to announce the results of their autopsy. They did a separate autopsy because they don't, in their words, trust the autopsy that the prosecutors uh, had done. They want their own results, so we expect to hear from them later on today at about uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and so... There is still a lot more to come. And, you know, you can see in this community the, the emotion is still raw a week later. Uh, and that is manifesting itself in so many different ways, as I alluded to. So you mentioned that uh, uh, former Officer Chauvin was supposed to make a court appearance, and he's not. That's being delayed by about a week. We know now that um, the Minnesota Attorney General has taken over the case. His name is uh, Keith Ellison. Um, what do we know about the case? Uh, do we know if this delay has something to do with the fact that uh, the, it's been handed over to the Attorney General? And, and how are mo things moving forward? Well, Keith Ellison is a former congressman from this area. He came back and is now Attorney General, a Democrat. Uh, and there are people in this community who have been lobbying for him to take control of this investigation. He is a person of color. Uh, and that's why they felt that they would be more comfortable with him. And the governor has uh, accepted that and now uh, brought Ellison on to lead the prosecution in this case. The other aspect of, of that dynamic is that there are people in this com community who feel they've been let down by Hennepin County uh, and its prosecutor's office in the past with other cases uh, that are similar to this that involve police excessive force accusations. And so this time they believe they, they will get 
perhaps a different outcome or having a better or will have a better shot of, at getting a different outcome if someone of Keith Ellison's stature is leading the prosecution. Uh, but the reality is, as I've been saying for the last seven days, it is difficult to uh, convict a police officer. It is just those are the facts. Uh, it is also difficult to arrest a police officer. But now that they are beyond that point in the Chauvin case, uh, we'll see how, what comes next. But having Ellison uh, leading the prosecution comes as a comfort for people in uh, some of these communities here in Minneapolis who feel that the Hennepin County Prosecutor's Office has let them down in the past. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff, uh, stay safe. Thank you so much for your reporting, Jeff Begays. My pleasure.